all the staff. I know that uh, the last week or so, for me at least, has been a whirlwind of activity. Uh, i spending a lot of time trying to figure out um, what the hell I'm supposed to be doing, quite frankly. Uh, as you all know, I, I don't really have a lot of experience with the assessor's office. I've never worked with the assessor's office, but I have a great deal of county experience. And so I wanted to make sure I came out and talked a little bit about my background, uh, some of my philosophies uh, in terms of management, and uh, where we're going to go from, from this point forward in terms of, uh, of the department. And so I know that there's been a lot of discussion in the press. You all have probably read a lot of stories about whether or not I'm qualified to run the assessor's office or to manage the assessor's office what sort of background I have, and so there's been a lot of um, information, and so let me just let me just give you a little background, a little history about my uh, my journey through the county fast. So I, I started uh, working for the, the treasurer and tax collector back in 1990. Uh, September 24th, 1990 is my official county start date, and I'm sure if I asked all of you what your official county start date is, you probably all know it. Um, that's the way we calculate our retirement, right? And uh, we're all looking forward to that. But um, I did start in the uh, treasurer and tax collector's office, and I was in public finance. And so I usually, when I went into meetings, I was usually the most popular individual coming to a meeting because I was the guy that had all the money. And so what I did was, if you as the county department wanted to uh, build a building, construct a building, purchase equipment, do TI improvements. Um, I was the individual that was charged with packaging it all together and issuing all of the debt. So I did uh, commercial uh, paper, uh, certificates of participation, leasehold revenue bonds, and so I was responsible for structuring all those financings on behalf of the county and dealing with the underwriting community, bond council, uh, as well as all the, the county uh, departments. So from Treasurer's collect, uh, Treasurer and Tax Collector's Office, I went up to the CAO's office. I was in the Capital Projects section, and so I was responsible for the most complex, uh, large-scale capital projects that the county was constructing. Has anybody been to the, uh, to the Disney Concert Hall? Yeah. The Philharmonic? Well, that was my project. I was responsible for all the financing, the budgeting, the construction, uh, working with the, the, the contractors, making sure payments were made, looking at timelines, when those things were going uh, to be complete. And so I started that. It took about eight to nine years of my county career to get that uh, off and running and finally constructed. Has anybody been to the LAC USC replacement hospital? 600 bed facility? I'm sure we've assessed it. Did we, did we have to assess that? County facility. So the, uh, the replacement hospital was also my project. 600 bit project was the largest construction project in the county's history. It was about $1.2 million.
overall the architecture will work, the space planning, um, the depth that you see all the way down to the most of the apartments on the right floor. So I had about the beginning. I got the whole apartment. So we had a lot of good uh, history with that. And after that, I actually went to just harvest the apartment. And I had looked at my resume at that point in time in my career, and I realized that I had no experience in running a department. I had a lot of very good experience in real estate, financing, but I didn't really understand the account fees, administrative apparatus experience running. How do you get things done? How do you get a contract through? Uh, human resources. I did budgets, uh, fiscal side of the shop. Um, Purchasing, contacting. So I learned how to manage a department. Um, doing the back, back of the house type of stuff, stuff that uh, is supporting the line operation. And so I did that for about three years or so. Went back to uh, the CAO's office again. I was in property development. And you all probably read the paper today that the uh, Grand Park project is going to have its dedication in July. Um, that was actually a development agreement that I negotiated with um, other staff and other consultants and lawyers with the county on behalf of the county. And so I was responsible for the negotiations for the Grand Avenue project, which included that part. And so I, I've been able to negotiate a lot of development agreements on behalf of the county for uh, many, many years, large projects. From there, I actually went back to Beaches and Harbors, and I was responsible initially for the, uh, the real estate side of the shop. And most of you probably know that you probably are the ones that are doing the possessory interest valuations and the valuations for the many leaseholds that are there for the county. Uh, I was responsible for all of the real estate, and we, uh, the county owns that land, and we ensure the long-term leases with the development community. So three years into that, three months actually into that gig, um, my department had decided to retire. And then somebody thought it was a good idea to hand me the keys to the department. And I said, well, I'll go ahead and do it, but I really didn't want to do it. So it was more than happy to stay at the deputy level. Uh, but you know, call. So I was with the Beaches Department for about four years. Um, and um, I'll let you guys know the story about how I became the chief deputy of the department. I was minding my own business. <laughs> Working in the yard on a Saturday morning, about 10 o'clock, my wife comes out and says, Bill Fujioka is on the line for you. And I said, Bill? She said, yes, Bill. And when you get a call, Bill Fujioka is my boss. When you get a call from your boss on a Saturday morning, uh, you don't think that anything really is happening. He's not calling me up to say, hey, you're doing a great job. <laughs> so um, I actually uh, got on the phone. I said, Bill, is everything okay? Did a uh, plane fall in the sky, get into the water? Is the boat, you know, did it wash up to our beach? Or is everything okay? He said, no, 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 everything's fine. And he says to me, uh, we're looking for someone to assist with the assessor's office through this transition. Well, Mr. Noguez was taking a leave of absence, and we thought you would be a really good candidate. Would you be interested in doing it? And I said, do I need to give you an answer right away? He says, no, take a couple of hours. Call me back. <laughs> so um, I went ahead and uh, talked with my wife about it. Um, I had promised her that it was going to take the summer a little easier. I was going to take more time off. On vacation, uh, spend more time with my three little girls. Um, and she looked at me and said, Well, if you think you really can help and you think you can do it, uh, I'll go ahead and support you. So I called Bill back and said, uh, you know, If the county really wants me to do it, you want me to change assignments, I'll go ahead and do it. And she said, Thanks, I'll get back to you. So I didn't hear from him again until Tuesday morning. Tuesday morning then. He decided he was going to nam nominate me as um, the individual to run the department while the was away. So I walked into his 
office early in the morning on Tuesday. He looked at me and says, are you ready for your next big adventure? And I said, are you serious? And he said, yes, we're going to make the nomination today. And I said, okay. So what was supposed to happen, just so you all know, was that they were supposed to nominate me on that Tuesday, and they were supposed to appoint me on that Tuesday. But what happened was that there was a Brown Act issue that my name and the recommendation wasn't on the agenda at the time, so they had to wait a week. And so that's why there was this delay. So when there was this delay, I decided that uh, it was important, I thought, for the assessors and organization that I meet with the senior level managers at the time uh, so that they could get a sense of who I am, uh, get a sense of uh, my So he already appointed himself. Uh, he appointed me because I didn't want it to be wow. the CEO of the Civic team. And there I am. And so I decided to go ahead and meet with them. And you probably all read in the paper that uh, Mr. Kreiman meets with senior level managers and he hasn't been appointed to the position. position. Right? And then, of course, he doesn't have an appraiser degree or an appraisal license or certificate. And there's a very good reason why I don't have an appraisal certificate. It's because I've never worked in the assessor's office before. And there's no need for me to have one. Um, but I have applied for, I have applied, right, for a, <laughs> for a temporary certificate. Um, I do intend on studying. I don't have time to study during work hours. I'll probably be doing it in the evenings, early in the mornings probably, and definitely on the weekends. That's disgusting. And so I'm hopeful. I haven't taken an exam for probably 25 years. Um, so I'm a little concerned about multiple test questions and uh, trying to get through that. But I think I'm pretty confident I might be able to squeeze by with a 71. Apparently, I just need a 70. So I'll try to do my best. So we're going to rectify the situation in terms of that license. Um, so that shouldn't be an issue. Now, I did meet with my senior level managers. Um, I'll share with you that I was a little concerned about meeting with them at first. Um, I was concerned about of the, the organization, and I had been reading a lot of things in the paper about you know, you all, Mr. Noguez, so I decided to go ahead and meet with them, talk to them. I had handed out a piece of paper at the meeting that talked about what I believe was essential and what was important, and I knew that as soon as I passed it out, that eventually it was going to get into the press. And I just wanted to know how quickly that was going to do, uh, that was going to take. So just to let you all know, it's about 20 minutes. <laughs> about 20 minutes. Uh, the meeting broke. My PIO at the Department of Beaches and Harbors started receiving phone call after phone call about what was happening at the meeting. And I told him I don't really, I'm not really interested in talking to the press at this point. Uh, but I have to tell you that, uh, that I was very disappointed. Very, very, very disappointed that that happened so quickly. And that something like that would be uh, presented. Uh, I did, uh, unbeknownst to the managers, I did uh, provide them each with a different kind of copy. Uh, I had typos in it purposely to figure out where the leak was. Unfortunately, the, uh, the letter wasn't printed as part of the message, but I had a beat on them. My oh, shit. And uh, I just want to let you know that each and every one of you, you guys can hear me out there, right? <laughs> I want you all to hear this. There is a policy in the department that requires all employees to trans transfer all media inquiries to the executive office. Everybody knows that, right? It's still in effect. So if anyone in the room, and I've said this to everyone that I've spoken to, okay, so don't feel like I'm picking on you or anything. Okay, I've already told everyone in the department that that rule is still in effect. That um, I think that uh, that when we have discussions with uh, the family, so to speak, or the inner circle, those things should stay within the inner circle. It's not that I'm trying to hide anything. Uh, there's nothing for me to hide. I've just arrived at the, uh, the department, and uh, I was
was really surprised that something like that actually happened. So if anyone in the room or anyone in the other room feel the need to talk to the press, uh, I ask two things, and two things only. The first is, make sure you tell the truth. I'm going to add a third thing. Tell the truth, and please, whoever is telling talking to the Los Cerritos folks, tell them to spell my, dad, my name right. <laughs> you spelled it wrong six or seven different times in the same article. So have them spell my name right. And then the third thing that I ask you, I ask you is make sure I don't find out about it. Okay? Because if I find out about it, there will be consequences. Okay? So everybody understands that? We all understand that? Yes, sir. So don't let me find out about it. But just don't do it because I really believe that it's highly